In this lecture, we look at methods for solving equations and we restrict ourselves to the case when we have one equation and one variable. There are two basic strategies for solving an equation. We say that we have a numerical solution to an equation if the solution is found by trying different values for the variable. Typically, this is done by a computer. We say that we have an analytical solution if we keep on replacing the equation with a simpler equivalent one until the solution is revealed. Only a small subset of all equations can be solved analytically. Most importantly, linear equations and quadratic equations can always be solved analytically. To illustrate the idea of a numerical solution, Let's say that we want to solve the equation x to the 6 minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0. This is a difficult equation that cannot be solved analytically. The basic idea is to evaluate the left hand side for various values of x. In this Excel sheet, I have evaluated my expression for different values of x between 0 and 2. You can of course extend this range but I happen to know that there are no solutions outside this range. We see that zero is not the solution. The left hand side is one, not zero. As I increase x, the value of the expression falls. We see that for x is equal to 0 0.3, the expression is 0.1, while it has become negative when x is equal to 0.4. This means that there must be a solution to the equation somewhere between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. By examining the sign of the expression, we see that there is another solution somewhere between 1.1 and 1.2. To find more decimals for the first solution, I have evaluated the expression for x between 0.3 and 0.4 with a higher resolution. From this, we see that the solution is somewhere between 0.33 and 0.34. We make an even finer resolution and we find a third decimal. The solution is between 0.333 and 0.334. In the next step, we see that 0.3338 gives us an expression which is very close to zero and we have found a solution with four decimals. The second root can be found using a similar procedure. You can use a calculator or a mathematical package to find numerical solutions to equations. For example, in Wolfram Alpha, you can type solve, followed by an opening parenthesis, then your equation, followed by a comma, and the name of your variable, and a closing parenthesis. The first solution is the one that we found with a few more decimals. The second solution is the one that we found between 1.1 and 1.2. The final three solutions are what's called complex solutions, but these are not real numbers. Simpler equations can often be solved analytically. There is no general procedure to follow. Rather, we have a set of strategies that we can select from. The basic strategy is to create a simpler equivalent equation by using one of the rules for equivalent equations. For example, remember that if I add or subtract a number to both sides of an equation, then that will give me an equivalent equation. We can use this strategy to solve a simple equation such as x minus 2 is equal to 5. If we add 2 to both sides, the left hand side will then simplify to x and we have the solution x is equal to 7. Another way of creating an equivalent equation was to multiply or divide both sides by a non-zero constant. For example, in the equation 2x is equal to 6. I can divide both sides by 2. The 2's will cancel on the left hand side, leaving me with the solution x is equal to 3. We have to be careful when we multiply or divide both sides by a variable or a constant, 
and make sure that it is not zero. For example, consider the equation one over x is equal to one over x plus one. If I multiply both sides by x, I get one equal to one plus x. The solution to this equation is x is equal to zero. However, this equation is not equivalent to the one we started with, as x equal to zero does not solve this equation. The point is that these two equations are only equivalent if x is different from zero. If x is different from zero, then the second equation has no solution, which is also true for the first equation. The right hand side is always one unit above the left hand side and it cannot have any solutions. Another trick we often use to solve equations is to apply a known identity to transform one side of the equation. For example, to solve the equation 2x plus 1 half is equal to 5, I begin by applying the distributive law to the left hand side. That gives me 2x plus 1 is equal to 5, which has the solution x is equal to 2. Another strategy that we sometimes use is to square both sides of an equation. For example, I can solve the equation square root of x is equal to 2 by squaring both sides. That will give me x is equal to 4. Note that squaring both sides of an equation may introduce fake solutions, numbers that are not solutions to the original equation. Consider, for example, the equation square root of minus x is equal to x. If I square both sides, I get minus x is equal to x squared, which has solutions 0 and minus 1. However, minus 1 is a fake solution. For x equal to minus 1, the left hand side will become 1 and the right hand side will become minus 1. The original equation has only one solution, namely x is equal to zero. We can also create an equivalent equation by taking the log of both sides of the equation as long as both sides are positive. For example, the equation e raised to x is equal to six can be solved by taking the natural logarithm to both sides, giving me the solution x is equal to ln six. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation 2 to the x is equal to 9 gives me x times ln 2 is equal to ln 9 or x is equal to ln 9 divided by ln 2. We can create an equivalent equation by exponentiating both sides. The equation ln x is equal to 4 is equivalent to e to the ln x is equal to e to the 4 or x is equal to e to the 4. Finally, an important strategy is to move all the terms to the left hand side so that we have a zero on the right hand side. If we can factor the expression on the left hand side, then we can use the result that a product of two terms is zero if and only if one of the terms is zero. For example, the equation x times x plus 1 is equal to 0 will have solution x is equal to 0 and x is equal to minus 1.